You're listening to Lit Out Loud, the podcast wherein we read aloud great works of poetry and prose and offer our thoughts. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Benjamin Carl. I'm coming to you today to read a poem by Walt Whitman entitled Miracles. Why, who makes much of a miracle? As to me, I know of nothing else but miracles. Whether I walk the streets of Manhattan, or dart my sight over the roofs of houses toward the sky, or wade with naked feet along the beach just in the edge of the water, or stand under trees in the woods, or talk by day with anyone I love, or sleep in the bed at night with anyone I love, or sit at a table at dinner with my mother, or look at strangers opposite me riding in the car, or watch honeybees busy around the hive of a summer forenoon, or animals feeding in the fields, or birds, or the wonderfulness of insects in the air, or the wonderfulness of the sundown, or of stars shining so quiet and bright, or the exquisite, delicate, thin curve of the new moon in spring, or whether I go among those I like best and that like me best, mechanics, boatmen, farmers, or among the savants, or to the soiree, or to the opera, or stand a long while looking at the movements of machinery, or behold children at their sports, or the admirable sight of the perfect old man, or the perfect old woman, or the sick in hospitals, or the dead carried to burial or my own eyes and figure in the glass, these with the rest, one and all, are to me miracles, the whole referring, yet each distinct and in its place. To me, every hour of the light and dark is a miracle, every cubic inch of space is a miracle, every square yard of the surface of the earth is spread with the same, every foot of the interior swarms with the same. Every spear of grass, the frames, limbs, organs of men and women, and all that concerns them, all these to me are unspeakably perfect miracles. To me, the sea is a continual miracle, the fishes that swim, the rocks, the motion of the waves, the ships with men in them. What stranger miracles are there? What stranger miracles indeed. I'm recording this poem in mid-December, a season of miracles. There's the celebrations of the Buddha who transcended death, and in the pagan tradition, the return of the Oak King who brings light back into the world upon the winter solstice. Hanukkah, the festival of light in the Jewish tradition, commemorating the rededication of the second temple in Judea, whereupon the light of the menorah shone for eight days and nights without another drop of oil. And nearby in Bethlehem, the immaculate conception and later birth of the Christ child, God made flesh and with it the birth of the single largest religion in the world today, boasting some two and a half billion followers. I make no claim of expertise in any of these phase, nor to the secret musings of our poet Mr. Whitman, and what inspired him to write of miracles, but I think we can all agree as to what a miracle is, an inexplicable and generally improbable phenomenon. Well, based on that, you might say, well, Benjamin, all of those things in the poem have ready explanations that are highly probable. How can they be miracles? Birds in flight, all or most birds fly. We can explain aerodynamics, the mechanism behind lift and so on, but what of it? Explaining how it works or even how it came to be by virtue of natural selection, the interactions of amino acids or comets delivering water to our newborn planet in the late heavy bombardment, no matter how far back you go, there is at some point a miracle. 
a single inexplicable and highly improbable phenomenon, a conceit that must be accepted. Perhaps this is the miracle that Whitman is getting at, this conceit. Children playing at sports, laughter and joy, love, life itself, in all its myriad forms and incalculable interactions, what need we of greater miracles than these? And then again, as Shakespeare's King Lear exclaims, reason not the need. It defies explanation. Maslow's hierarchy attempts to describe it, but the reason, it seems, is in our very nature. Well, these are my own musings on miracles. Whatever you're celebrating, live that celebration as deeply as you can. Suck the marrow of it, to paraphrase Thoreau, and without justifying it to anyone, enjoy all of the miracles this season and indeed this life has to offer. I'm Benjamin Carl, and you've been listening to Lit Out Loud.